Hi, I'm Joe Clegg. I'm uh, Ellie Golding's drummer and musical director, and we're here at the Liverpool Echo Arena for Ellie's Delirium World Tour. I'm going to talk you through my kit, the electronics that I use, and the, uh, the relationship between acoustic and electronics, and, and my take on that. My setup is uh, basically powered by the SPD-SX, but I use it in an unconventional way. I use it as a MIDI controller. I have it set up so that I can control songs, start songs, stop songs from stage. Uh, all my sound sources come from um, our laptop side of stage, which, which is running at Ableton Live. I use five PD-8s, two on my right hand side, uh, mainly for snares and hi-hats, and then three on my left hand side, which are used for toms, snares, claps, those kind of things. And then I have a, a KT-10 on the floor, which I use nearly every song. Um, I have triggers on the snares, um, and they're used in a couple of ways. I have two on each snare. One is for front of house, so they take a, a signal from the trigger and it opens up their gates, so they can have control over my ghost notes, be able to really tighten it up when they need to. And the second one is uh, for layering of sounds, enhancing my snare drum. Um, I have claps and complementary sounds that work with acoustic snare drums, and I have them on pretty much every song. Taking a drum part from a pop record like Ellie's is very, very electronic, um, but I really want the two worlds to live together. Organic and electronic have very, very distinct voices, and I think the marriage between the two is quite complex. With the snare drums I have, I'm using Ableton to, to change sounds all the time, so I may have on the tune form the choruses um, one particular clap sound with a really short tail, and then um, on the verses maybe a longer sustain. My approach as musical director generally is that I want to be really faithful to the recorded sounds on the record because they've been pined over and crafted by experts, by professionals. And it's my job to replicate that, but also to add something new. And that's the fun of working on a gig like this, is because we have great players, great technology. Today we're on show 22 of this world tour, so we're, we're really up and running. My job is to make sure the band are on stage on time, they're playing their parts they need to play, check in um, all the technology that we have. This show, this size, also making sure that time code is running correctly. My SPDSX runs the whole show. I need to make sure that everything that I hit, everything that I start, is working as it should. We have some things which, some tracks which are looped, which Collar just waits for me to trigger new loops before he plays. Ellie would walk in maybe um, halfway through, she would check out the room, she would give me a couple of songs. Um, my job is then I usually step out from behind the kit and go and speak to her, make sure she's happy, make sure mix is up and running. And that's it, and then straight to catering, where it's coffee and food, and then waiting for the show. And when it comes to showtime, that's really when, my, when I'm working, as you'd expect. Because um, I'm playing drums on the gig as well, and I'm starting all the tracks. I need to just be focused and switched on and be aware of what's going on. Three tips, I guess, for drummers wanting to start exploring the world of electronics. Um, I suggest Starting by getting your hands on something that you can actually play with, um, either an SPD-SX which has great sounds inside it, um, you can start making music with it straight away. Or a TM2, which perhaps might be an easier step into it, where you can plug triggers in and you can start then adding triggers to drums and finding out how these sounds work together. And then thirdly, just not be afraid of experimenting and trying out new things and new sounds that you hear, sampling records and get yourself a copy of Ableton or some other software that allows you to get more in depth with it and have fun.